Welcome to language analysis. What we're going to go through here is a list of all the persuasive language techniques you'll need to know in order to be able to do a persuasive language essay. So for each slide and each technique, I will provide the name of it, which will be at the top in yellow, the definition, a three word summary, which has been created by previous students, and a piece of evidence, which, or an example, which will be provided in quotation marks. And lastly, the effect this has on the reader. Firstly, and probably the most easiest, is alliteration, which is the repetition of vowel or consonant sounds for effect. So three words, repetition of sounds. Our example is Jared jokes about John. So the J sound is being repeated and the letter J is quite obviously possible to pick out from the page when you're reading through your article. The effect is it draws attention to the point. It's nice to read and listen to. It's not persuasive in and of itself, but it draws attention. Anecdote. So an anecdote is a story. It can either be a personal story or a story you heard someone else tell you or even a story you read in a newspaper. In three words, it's a personal emotional story. Our example here is recently my neighbor experienced this problem firsthand. And the effect is it encourages the reader to show emotion and see the topic as more related to them. Appeal to authority. This is a reference to someone with experience on the topic. So we say experience, uh, not qualifications because that's the basic delineation between this and expert opinion. So in three words, words from expert. For example, Professor John Matthews said, it's true, trust me, I'm a professor. And the effect is it positions the audience as a learner with someone knowledgeable explaining things, which is a very powerful thing. It makes the author be the teacher and the reader be the student to simplify things a little bit. And the assumption is it must be true because a person with experience said it. Appeal to common sense. This is getting people to agree on things that they already believe makes sense. So for, in three words, precious, practical, point. And the example is, terrorism is like an angry dog. If you poke a dog, it will bite. So the effect is, you're getting something quite simple and something quite linear that most people would agree with, and then you're comparing it to your issue. Appeal to family values. So the point of this is to get your audience to agree with you because they respect or like their family. So I've got here links the wider world to family groups to inspire warm feelings. And in three words, we've got traditional family plus. So for example, move your family to Craigieburn and you'll be safe, happy, and smart. So it's inspiring you to do what's best for your family. The effect is it appeals to those who have families and it doesn't if you don't have one or you don't feel the feelings that they're asking you to feel. Appeal to fear and insecurity. So this refers to potential imagined or real threats to your safety. In three words, be scared and helpful. Our example is, imagine your dad exploding. And the effect of this is that you're a little bit more worried, you're a little bit insecure, and because of that, you're more willing to listen to what else they have to say. Appeal to hip pocket nerve. This is basically any reference to money, how it should be spent, how it should be saved, and how it should be taxed. In three words, saving money equals good. For our example, we've got, imagine how much money you would save if you stopped driving your car. And the effect is usually it tries to make the reader angry about the money that's being wasted or the money that's being lost, or it's trying to use it in a positive sense to say you could be much richer than you are if you did so and so. Appeal to tradition and custom. This is referring to the past, the good old days when we were growing up back in my day. In three words, change is bad. For example, elders have been complaining about young generations for years, and look what the result of it is, a decayed society. And the effect, it makes the older generation or people that feel old in their hearts feel more comfortable about the thoughts and feelings they have about the good old days. Appeal to loyalty and patriotism. This is referring to the love of one's country or the benefits of one's country. In three words, love your country. For example, Aussies rule the world. And the effect is this positions the reader in a way that they're more likely to agree with what you're saying if they agree with the sentiment that you've put forward, that the country is the best or that you owe some debt to the country that you live in. Appeal to sense of justice. This is referring to fairness and punishment, usually quite a simplistic form. So maybe what your parents taught you or what you learned in kinder or primary school. Very basic concepts of fairness. In three words, crime equals time equals fair. For example, the death penalty is the ultimate form of cruelty. It's a violation of fundamental human rights. It's not a right or just thing to do. And the effect is, it makes things sound fair, and 
it allows people to go back to a simpler time when not everything was grey and some things were still black and white. There was the goodies, the baddies, the black hats and the white hat. Attack. This is attacking a group of people or one person individually. In three words, you are revolting. For example, Mr. Kolba is the most massive idiot yet born. And the effect, it makes it really easy for the reader to work out who the bad guys are and why they're wrong and therefore why the author is correct. Clichés. A cliché is an overused or well-known phrase. In three words, cheesy, overused phrase. For example, we brought our A game. And a lot of clichés are used by athletes, uh, and you'll hear them come up numerous times if you listen to a sporting broadcast. The effect is, the phrase is familiar, so the reader feels safe. It's not persuasive in and of itself, and too many of them is really quite a sin in terms of writing. It makes it quite predictable and quite obvious. Colourful language. Colourful language is a use of strange or uncommon language to draw interest to key concepts. In three words, swearing, exaggeration, connotations. For example, the brutal beheading of people. If you had to use the word decapitation here, that also would have been a very colourful, uh, connotation-rich word or phrase you could have used. And the effect is, it evokes a sentiment or opinion through word choice. So this won't be something you find just in a particular spot, but it'll be something that runs across an entire article. Connotations and loaded words. These are words that carry baggage or have a wide web of associated meanings that go along with them. In three words, emotional implied baggage. For example, the Australian dollar slumped to a new low last night due to increasing nervousness about Europe's economic woes. So woes, nervousness, slumped, all these bring pictures into your mind of the dire straits that the Australian dollar is in. And the effect, it works up the reader, makes them feel emotional. It can even push the boundaries a little bit. So if I'm using words like Nazi or Feminazi to really get people riled up, that's one way you could do it with a word that has a lot of negative connotations or very positive connotations to go with your attacks and your praise in your article. Emotive language is using emotional words to tap into the emotional responses that we all have built into us. In three words, feels bad or good. For example, come on, you don't want to be sad your whole life. Don't you want to be happy? And the effect is, it makes, in the intended effect, I guess, is that the people feel the emotions that you say, which is very unlikely unless you're a very gifted writer. If I say, reading this will make you cry, almost no chance you'll be crying as you read that. But this is the intention, you're trying to lead them towards a certain emotional state. Evidence. So. Evidence is providing quotations or clear pieces of evidence to support arguments. In three words, hard facts supports. For example, an ACE report found this pattern common. And the effect is, it makes it seem more objective and reliable. But then again, you don't want it to be too evidence heavy, as that might make it a little bit academic, and therefore harder for your audience to access. Exaggeration, overstatement, and hyperbole. So all these words are synonyms, they mean roughly the same thing. And it means expressing arguments in an overt, overblown way. In three words, OTT, over the top, or overreacts, dramatic, emotional. For example, the Spurs are the best team ever. They are so fit, young, and beautiful. They are so good and full of skill. Such an amazing team. Things like, this is the best team ever. This milkshake is the best milkshake I've ever had. Literally, this is the best thing ever. These are examples of exaggeration. Uh, the effect is, if you do it well, it's not that obvious, but if you do it poorly, then uh, everyone finds it a bit funny or a little bit hard to believe. But the intention is that you make it very clear who's good and who's bad. Expert opinion. Using an expert to support your arguments. In three words, important person says. And for example, Professor Phillips states, all animals have no brain. Typically, you put the, uh, the all animals have no brain in quotation marks. And that would be how you'd find an expert opinion in an article. But the effect, again, it makes it more believable and it makes it sound as though the author has done their research. Generalization. This is grouping people arbitrarily or stereotyping them based on one part of them. Say, all women believe dot dot. All gay males believe dot dot. In three words, everyone thinks the same. For example, all of Tony Abbott's supporters are biased, bigoted racists who don't deserve your vote. And the effect is, it makes people believe that everyone who is not them 
is one amorphous group and they're all the same, they're homogeneous rather. Graphs and diagrams, uh, the example's pretty clear here. In three words, simple, readable facts. And the effect is, it makes it very simple. It's even easier than statistics to understand. You look at the colors of the boxes or the size of the bars, and you can work out what's going on, even if you're not very well educated and your maths knowledge isn't fantastic. Inclusive language, use of collective pronouns to bring people together. In three words, includes reader together. For example, finally the research to back up what we all know, that the cost of parking in the city is painful. And the key word there is we, being the collective pronoun. And the effect this has on the reader is that it makes them feel a part of what the author is writing and a part of what's going on. Irony is expressing the opposite of what you really mean. In three words, meaning is opposite or sarcastic opposition people. For example, is Jill dumb? Nah. The effect is it gives the reader some enthusiasm, a bit of fun and a bit of laughter, only if it's done well. It's quite possible that the reader will be confused and not understand why they're speaking against their own argument because that is by nature what irony does. Metaphor and simile. Now these are two distinct things but we put them together for ease and clarity. So this is any use of descriptive language to make comparisons clear and imaginable. In three words, this, like that. or x equals y. For example, Coburg is a melting pot. The effect is it gives a comparison between two things that makes the reader more interested. So you're comparing two things in an interesting way or a novel way. Praise. Praise is people or groups respected by the author. In three words, you are perfect. For example, Mr. Colbert is amazing. The effect is the reader can really tell who the goodies are or at least who the author believes or is trying to set forward as the goodies in this example. Fun. A pun is a play on words or using a shared awareness of homonyms, which are words with multiple meanings, to generate comedy. In three words, play on words. For example, being a vegetarian is a missed steak. So it's a play on the word mistake there, and they've changed the word so that it reads differently, but it sounds the same when read aloud. The effect is, hopefully it makes the reader laugh, uh, and it shows off how, the, how clever the author is and how humorous they are. Reason and logic. Performing logical steps to support arguments. In three words, sensible, logical, superior. For example, if the spurs beat the heat, then the heat suck. This follows logically, but it's not necessarily correct. So the effect is, it makes complex things simple by saying, if this is this, then this is true. For example, if the spurs beat the heat, then the heat suck. Repetition is repeating a word or a phrase multiple times in our piece. In three words, repetition of word. For example, blah, blah, blah. Uh, is this persuasive and what is the effect? Well, the effect is that one word or phrase will become stuck in the reader's head, hopefully, and it makes that word emphasized throughout the piece. Rhetorical question. Uh, a question for which the answer is not expected. In three words, don't answer equals rhetorical or no thinking needed. And our example is, do you want your children to grow up and become alcoholic druggies? The effect is, it draws attention to the reader by forcing them to agree with the statement being put forward. At least that's the idea in theory. No one's going to read a question and answer what the author thinks. Quite often you might read it and you'll respond to the opposite of what the author will think, or wants you to say, or believe, but that's the intention. Statistics. Using numerical proof to back up your arguments. In three words, numbers number one. For example, 500% increases in the taxable income of normal Australians would mean death for the Aussie battler. And the effect is, uh, it makes your arguments more believable, or at least more logical, due to the fact that you've used numbers. The rule of three. It's just grouping things into bunches of threes. For example, we all need life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. In three words, it's thing one, thing two, thing three. And the effect is it's pleasing to the ear or the eye of the reader or the listener. And that's it. That's all the techniques you'll need to know. Uh, these slides were originally begun by 10N, which was the class of 2014, and they were the graduating class of 2016. And thank you for listening, and I hope this has helped you with your persuasive language.